Well, the important thing to understand about oxidative stress is first, there's a small amount of oxidative stress that's normal. As you metabolize, you bring oxygen in and you produce some degree of oxidative stress. Oxidative stress means biomolecules that have been oxidized. When it's oxidized, they've lost electrons. When you take oxidized biomolecules and you can restore the electrons to them, you take them from an inactive state back to an active state. And in fact, it may sound like an oversimplification, but I've been looking for an exception to this rule for 10 years now, and I've not found one. Increase oxidative stress is disease. It doesn't cause disease. It is the disease. The state of having too many biomolecules and too many situations, enzymes, structural proteins, too many molecules in the oxidized state, they lose their function, and that is the pathology of disease. When a biomolecule or a group of biomolecules lose their function, that is disease. So this brings us then to the point that anything that oxidizes is a toxic molecule. Toxicity is pro-oxidant. The only way that a toxin inflicts toxicity is by directly oxidizing biomolecules or causing biomolecules to be oxidized. And it doesn't matter that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of toxins out there. The final common denominator of all toxins is they cause biomolecules to be oxidized. This is why and I was flabbergasted many years ago because I read Dr. Klenner's work and a bunch of other people did vitamin C research. And I began to work for myself clinically and saw the same thing happening, which was a single molecule, this little tiny molecule called vitamin C, when you give large enough doses of it, it will neutralize and negate the toxicity of any toxin exposure any poisoning, anything of any kind. I mean, vitamin C intravenously should replace the poison control center completely, okay? Mm -hmm. But I said, how can one molecule neutralize the toxicity of thousands of different large molecules, small molecules, this tissue, that tissue? And the answer ultimately became apparent. It's because the toxicity of a toxin is its ability to oxidize, nothing more. So then you put all this together and we take this, if you will, theory of disease a step further and we then come to the realization that all diseases are caused by toxins. All diseases are caused by molecules that have a pro-oxidant, the ability to oxidize nature. So then that begins, this brings us to the ultimate part of therapy. Mm -hmm. That being, and Dr. Huggins told me this many, many years ago when I was just having a conversation with him and I was a little frustrated and I didn't understand something. And he said, Tom, he said, you can't dry off while you're still in the shower. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my goodness. And that made all the sense of the world. Just about all medical, effective medical protocols involve trying to repair damage, okay? okay? How much antioxidants can you get to the oxidized biomolecules? And sometimes you can get a very dramatic and positive response. But it makes no sense to do that and not try to find out what are your daily sources of new toxins coming in. You want to not only repair damage, you want to prevent damage from occurring in the first place. So that's the two-pronged approach to any ultimately positive medical therapy is stop or inhibit or thwart the exposure to new oxidants, new toxins, and get optimal levels of antioxidant nutrients. That's what a nutrient is. A nutrient is an antioxidant at the molecular level. As get as much good nutrition and antioxidant to repair the old damage and bring those inactive biomolecules back into play. Unfortunately, modern medicine, as we know it, does neither. 
Mm-hmm. It doesn't look at it doesn't look at new toxins and new oxidative stress, and it doesn't really attempt to repair old damage. It just throws enough stuff at the wall until it finds a toxic drug that, by some crazy mechanism, decreases a symptom. On the other hand, alternative or complementary medicine, most of it only does one part of that, which is let's try to repair the damage while still not recognizing the role of infections and new toxins that need to be addressed as well. Truly, there are many diseases now, and you know, you're not supposed to say that horrible three-letter word, uh, four, four-letter word cure. But if you catch what normally should not be a curable disease, but you catch it early in its stage, and you get rid of the new toxins, and you repair the old damage, you can see by all external appearance a complete resolution or cure of these diseases. So many cancers that seem to respond extremely positive to a protocol, what happens down the road? Mm -hmm. They come back or a new cancer develops. That's because you didn't turn off the shower, okay? Mm -hmm. You got to turn off the shower, stop the new toxins, and then if you can repair the old damage, the body has an enormous ability to heal. But these toxins go straight to the coronary arteries by the venous system, and they go straight to the breast tissue by the lymphatic system. And even though... I'm presenting the case that this is very much the etiology of all disease. Obviously, you want a book to catch attention. So I also said, and it's true, that these silent infections, asymptomatic infections, caused most, by most, I mean greater than 90% of heart attacks and most breast cancers. Well, if you eliminate heart disease and breast cancer, uh, you've saved 65 to 70% of the world right there until they finally get diseased and die from something else.